Speak uh, line. Dollar Aleph. Yeah. Correct? All right. Yeah. Uh, Karaka in a vineyard. Beit Shammai says 24 amot. Beit Hill says 16 amos. The macho of a vineyard. Beit Shammai says 16 amot, uh, 16 defakim. But Beit Hill says 12 defakim. What is a karaka of a vineyard? A vineyard that has been, become bare in the middle. If it is less than 16, uh, um, 16 defakim, one may not sow seeds there. If it is 16 defakim, it is given its tillage space and one may sow the rest. What is the macho of the vineyard? Between the vineyard and the fence. If there, is, or if there are not 12 tefakim there, then he, might, he, then he may not bring seeds there. If there were 12 tefakim, it is given its tillage place and he may sow the rest. But Yehuda says, this is merely a fence of the vineyard. And what is the macho of a vineyard? Between two vineyards, that what is a fence? That which is 10 tefakim high and a ditch. What, that which is 10 deep and four wide. Okay. Okay, so... Um, a, a, a cubit, a cubit is a, a one cubit is a, tef, a tefakim, right? And a hand. One, one, one cubit is uh, a cubit is an amma. Amma, uh, but we call we say we when we call it Turkey. We, a tefakh is a tefakh is a hand breadth, and a cubit is an amma. It's basically from the from from an, an, an elbow to the end of the middle finger. Okay, so if I say this was if there were twelve tefakim, it is given in the tiller space. That's the right thing to say, correct? But if it says that which is ten to fucking high is the same thing. Why do they use different words? Sorry, wait. Um, in in, in, in Mishnah uh, base at the end, uh, I think the last sentence it says, there, "If there were twelve to fucking, it is given the tillage space." In, yeah, so that's so that's twelve to fucking gap, right? So right. the tillage space is dalit amas. Sorry, twelve, 12 not twelve to fucking, twelve amas. Oh, I said, I, I was, that's what moves me up. Okay, I made a mistake. 12 amot. Okay, 12 amot. Mm -hmm. well. And 10 hand breadth is, is, um, there's a fuck em. Okay, like I was getting it mixed up. Uh, this is merely, um, no, we did this one. Okay. And yeah. this, okay, okay, okay. All right, so, so we're ready to go into Dalit. Dalit, Dalit. Okay. Okay. Um, Sakanim. Now, um, again, we, we just said that if there was a fence, uh, then the fence allows you to plant right next to the vineyard. Right. You got, all right. Then you, once you can see that there's a division over there, the fence has to be ten tefachim high, and and then and then you can plant right next to it as opposed to four, uh, four amas away. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, what happens if you've got a mechitza made out of reeds, um, uh, and you basically planting? So you're sticking um, reeds in 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 the ground. Um, to make a to designate a you know, let's think of bamboo. Bamboo would be a great a great thing to use over here. So you take bamboo and you and you shove it down in, in between on the edge of the of the vineyard in order to um, in order to uh, to to block it off from other crops. Right. If you if you have a, uh, anything that, that has less than three tfachim between it, we call lavud. Just like we have in sukkah, we have in machitza over here. Same thing. Okay, right. so if it's so if it's less than three tefachim, that's uh, that's a, that's as small as uh, that's a gap small enough to say okay, you know, it's not there, and it's and it's considered a solid fence. Kadeshi can I say That's the, that's basically the um, the rule of thumb is that a goat wouldn't get through a gap of less than three tefachim. Mm -hmm. Okay, hare uh, zok mechitza. Then this is a this is a legit mechitza. But Gadarsh Nifrats, now let's say you've got a, a, a nice fence along, but uh, but the, the um, it got trampled, it fell over in a storm or whatever it is. Um, and now there's a there's a gap in the fence that's less than 10 amas. Okay, Harehu Kapesa, that's just like a doorway. Okay, less than 10 amas, uh, and an amma we said is like half a meter, so we're talking about a gap of about five meters. Okay, and that's considered like a doorway, and 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 you're still allowed to plant directly outside there because of the rest of the fence on the outside, on the other side. Okay, yasemi can. However, if it's more than four amas, can they get up here to Then you're no longer allowed allowed to plant uh, in front of the in front of the breach. Okay, nifretubal pratzas harbe. Now, what happens if there are lots of breaches in the fence? Okay, ima omed meruba ala parots if. So each breach is smaller than ten uh, than ten amas, okay. But it's, it's this this fence is looking very patchy, 
so if the if the standing fence is uh, is still the majority if you've got at least 50 percent of the of the perimeter covered by the uh, by, by standing portions of fence motor then it's considered that you've just got a lot of openings the pirates marupala omed but if you've got more opening than fence then you then you don't have then you don't have openings then you just got um, no fence okay can they get up here to answer then opposite then opposite the breaches is also nonetheless what you learn from this is that where the fence is standing even though it's a minority you could still plant on the other side of that fence because it's a clear division between the, the vineyard and whatever it is that you're planting when we say a fence up to 10 uh, uh 10 i'm out it, it's point nine point nine 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 nine. in other words it, you can't hit the 10 it's not including the 10 uh that is the that is what it sounds like yeah no, it's actually Kahati says it differently. He says, and Ifrat Ad Eser Amos, as long as it's not more than 10 Amos. But if it's more than, than 10 Amos, so 10 Amos exactly is still acceptable. And 10.999 is still acceptable? 10.001 10 is no longer. No longer. Okay. Oh, oh, all right. <laughs> okay. That's an engineer for you. Okay. All right. yeah, you're going to need to get, uh, you're going to need to get like, uh, you know, calipers or whatever to see that it, how, how exact it can be in in the real world it's, it's unlikely you're going to be able to measure ex an, an exact measure it'll either be more it'll be less <laughs> okay okay uh, yeah. um hey i'm not sure if a person plants a row of five grapevines it's shamai omrim kerim so they shall say five grapevines is considered a vineyard even if it's all planted in one row. They'll say a kerim is not just one row, it has to be two rows. You need five, you need five vines and they've got to be planted in two rows. So now it sounds over here that this is a kula of base uh, base hilal because they're saying that it, we don't get stringent with you unless you've got two rows. Okay, but that kula in a moment is going to turn into a khumra. Mm -hmm. Why? Somebody plants um, within uh, within the four the four amas of a of a kerem. Um, and you only have to destroy one row of the um, of the vineyard. Do, do you, are you following the picture over here? Trying to, yeah. Hold on. So let me, let me, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a, a whiteboard. It's been a while since we've had one of those. Oh, this is the press conference. For some reason, my Zoom hasn't been yet allowed. Allow. What? Okay, hold on a second. Um, we want to use the. Um, Wait, something, something. I'm trying to work out my my zoom over here. Um, share the screen, whiteboard. Why? Security, privacy to grant access. Security, privacy. What is it? Security, privacy. Screen recording. To record the comments even while using the apps there. Okay, I'm gonna to have to quit for a minute and I'll come back in. Okay. Okay, so um, here we go. We've got a we've got a carrium, um, and according to uh, so according to let me use a stamp over here, and if each X is a each, each stamp over here is a is divine. So according to Beis Shammai, he has a kerim. Okay, yeah. this is a Beis Shammai kerim. Okay, and this over here is a Beis Hillel kerim. Okay, so I'm going to put a, a text over here. Beis Hillel kerim, and this over here is a. Okay, so now, 
so this over here looks like a color of basic level that require you to have two rows in order to define this as a carib. Okay, however, Basil L turns into a Hummer in the following circumstances. Let's say you have a, a, a full-blown carib. Nobody's going to argue about this, that this is a carib, right? Okay. okay. And now somebody comes in and plants uh, some wheat just over here. Okay. So now, base is uh, now. What's what's the what's the, the distance that you're allowed to keep? So let's make sure make sure that that we uh, we've got over here. Let's say that the that the Dalit Amas um, over here. Let's let's say that this over here is um, this distance over here is four Amas. Okay. Okay. Now, according to base Shammai, what area over here is going to be destroyed? Because Beis Shammai says you only need one row to be a carrium. So these, so these plants over here, they should be taken out, right? Because this is the carrium. This is this is within the carrium. So these, so these things are going to become aser, and you're going to have to uproot them. Beis Hill will say, hold on a second, no, no, you've got. Um, I'm going to join pink for base for Beis Hill over here. They still will say this isn't the carrium until here. This this is the carrium, right? You need to up to here is the carrium that you're planting in. So since you're within four amas of, of the of the carrium, then we're going to assay these ones as well. See that? Right. Okay, so that's the that now becomes the Khumra of base Hillel because they say that that just one row wouldn't have been a carrium. If you're gonna assay the carrium, you've got to assay two rows. So it's okay. more, than, more than four amal then, the distance between the... So um, the, even, the, even though the second row is more than four amas away from the forbidden species, it, the second row is also going to become Asr. Uh, okay, that makes it very clear. Good. Right, Thank, you. Good. Thank you. Okay. Now I'm going to keep this whiteboard open because it's going to be useful for the next Mishnah. Okay, um, okay so... so um, so as we said, Lepichach Hazoria Arba Amos B'Shiva Kerem Beis Shammai Omrim Kiddush Shura Achas Beis Hilol Omrim Kiddush Dei Shura. Okay, so that's what I just explained over here is is that the 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 kula of Beis Hilol becomes a chumra when it comes to what what became Aser. Okay, um, next Mishnah Vav Hanotayah Shtaim Keneged Shtaim V'Achas Yotz Azanav Arayze Kerem. Okay, so now we're, we're ignoring now, we, we've, we've ditched base Shammai now, and we're looking only inside the opinion of base Hillel. Okay, and um, this is the definition of the, of the Kerim according to base Hillel, when you've got one, uh, one coming out over here that looks like a tail. Right. Okay? So, that's the, so that's the tail, and, and you can see it's actually got that diagram inside, inside the yeah. Kati. Um, Stein Kenegid Stein Vachas bin Tayem. Or Stein Kenegid Stein Vachas bin Emta. Eno Kerem. So you can see those diagrams inside the Kahati of the, of the things that are not a Kerem, just for the, um, for the benefit of, uh, of the whiteboard. I'll just say what's not a Kerem is, uh, is two, op uh, two opposite each other. So we said Vachas bin Tayem, which is like, uh, like like this, right? Um, right. Okay. Or uh, one like uh, this, 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 this. That's also not right. Okay. There's, a, there's another one also that he has there. Right. There's the one that looks like the like the five of diamonds. Right. Right. Okay. And these are not considered a carrium. Bam. Bam. Okay. All of these cases are not considered a carrier. Okay. Um Eno Kerim Achi Stein uh Neged Stein Vachas Yotzazanav. So you have to have the one re, uh, that that um projects out beyond these uh these vines over here. That's your minimal your minimal carrier. In in reality, um it's it's unlikely you would ever find such a situation. And we'll see in, uh, we'll see in a minute that this is only referring to we'll see in later Mishnahs that this is only referring to um to vines that haven't been trellised, 
because as uh -huh. soon as you start trellising vines, it becomes a carom immediately. Right. It doesn't matter how many plants you got, even one is uh, is considered a carom once it goes onto a trellis. Okay. okay, we'll see that. We'll see that later. Good. Thank you. All right. Um, we are on right here. I'll have, um, I'll have, I'll have Zion, right? No. Yeah, I'll have Zion. Am I correct? Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I'll have Zion. Good. One may, one may not bring a tree onto a tree, a vegetable onto a vegetable, nor a tree onto a vegetable, or a vegetable onto a tree. It be who to permit a vegetable onto a tree. Um, one may not plant vegetables in the stump of a sycamore tree. One may not graft rue onto white cassia because it is a vegetable onto a tree. And one may not plant a fig tree shoot in a citrus uh, cistus in order to cool it. One may not assert a shoot, uh, insert a shoot vine into a melon in order to water it because it is a tree onto a vegetable. And one may not put gourd seed into a mallow in order to preserve it because it's a vegetable into a vegetable. If one buries turnips or horseradish under a vine, if some of the leaves are uncovered, it may not be uh, concerned about calium or about uh, severus or about mycerus, and they may be extracted on the Shabbos. If one sows wheat and barley together, that is calium. Rehuba says it is not calium unless there are two wheat grains and one barley grain, or one wheat grain and two barley grains, or a wheat grain, a barley grain, and a spelt grain. Okay, that's that. Paya hey If a person sells his field, the seller is permitted, but the purchaser is forbidden. A purchaser may not hire. In, in other words, the, the purchaser is forbidden to take uh, the matanoslani. I'm assuming that the purchaser is an ani, um, but the, but the seller, if the seller is an ani, then he's also um, that he is permitted to take it now. So once the, once the ownership is transferred, even though it, it all grow on, grew on his watch, nonetheless he's now permitted to take the the things right. for the ani. A person may not hire workers on condition that his son will gather after him. He who does not allow the poor to gather or who allows one and not another or he aids one of them robs the poor of such a, per of such a person. It is stated, remove not the landmark of those who come up to Olam. Olam. The sheaf that the workers forgot, but the owner did not forget. The owner forgot, but the workers did not forget. Or if the poor man um, stood before it when they uncovered it with a stubble, then it, this is not a not kalayim. Okay. All right. That's it, right? Um, eight. Yeah. The, the, no, you've got, to, you've got to do one more. Yeah. If a person collects sheaves to make hats or kumaso or a cake or sheaves, it is not like he's not liable to shikha. If it's taken from there to the threshing floor, it is liable to shikha. If a person collects sheaves for the heap, it is liable to shikha. From there to the threshing floor, it is not liable to shikha. If this is the general rule. Whoever collects sheaves to take to a place that marks the conclusion of their work, he is liable to shikh. From there to be the resting floor. It is not liable to shikh to a place that does not mark the conclusion of the work. It is not liable to the shikh from there to the threshing floor. It is liable to um, the shikh. Okay. Okay. This was nice. It gave us a little more time. I know I wasn't running because usually there's a shear after. Uh, oh, you know, I, I realized that I made a typo when I first put it into the into the chat. I said maybe nine uh, nine oh five to eight ten. Uh, it was meant to be eight oh five to eight ten. <laughs> it was nice. It was like I didn't have to rush like crazy. So, what is raw saliva? Anyone who has not tasted anything. What is spit bean water? A, a split bean water. Chewed split beans, which were separated from the peels. What is urine? That which fermented, fermented, fermented. The, one must scrub the stain three times with each and every one of the detergents. If one applied these detergents out of their sequence or if they applied all seven simultaneously, he has not accomplished anything. For any woman who has a fixed period, her time suffices for her. If there are fixed periods, uh, she yawns or sneezes or she feels pain in the area of her navel or in the lower abdomen, abdomen or she uh, streams blood or any type of shivering takes hold of her and so to similar symptoms 
if she establishes for her any, if, if she establishes for her any of these symptoms three times, it is a fixed period. If she was accustomed to experience a menstrual discharge at the beginning of the, of the episodes, all the taharas that she handled for the duration of the episodes of tame. If at the end of the episodes, all the taharas that she handled for the duration of the episodes are tahor. Yossi says days and hours also establishes fixed periods. If she was accustomed to experience a discharge at sunrise, she is forbidden for a cohabitation only at sunrise. If Yehuda says the entire day is permitted for her. If she was and accustomed to can. That's it. That's three. Yeah. Um, um, on this last one with Reb Yossi, okay, days and hours also establishes fixed periods. If she was accustomed to experience a discharge, we're talking about uh, yeah. So this is so this is when uh, when so when the woman has got a, has got a, a particular um, a time that she normally that she normally comes on. Okay. Right. So, but so it's we just yeah. But she says she's forbidden for cohabitation only at sunrise, but the rest of the day is permitted to her. But well, if 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 she normally comes if she normally comes on in the morning, then it that is, time then that time is is prohibited. But then Rabbi Yossi says, but if she didn't come on, then that's it. She doesn't have to. Um, uh, once she's but once she's past the time when she normally when she normally comes on, the rest of the day is permitted for her and her husband. But, it, it yeah. says, but the night before is is Asr according to to Rabbi Yossi because she could be coming on at any time right. before that. But I'm misunderstanding something. Otherwise, uh, fixed periods. If she was accustomed to experience, so she's accustomed. Oh, so I think this so it's like left out. You know, it's it's implied that. She's accustomed to the discharge. It doesn't happen. So then the rest of the day. That's right. Out. That's right. It didn't happen exactly. So that's what that's what's kind of left out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fine. Yeah, if if you don't if you don't have that implicit, then that sounds very weird. Yeah. <laughs> trying to figure out what's going on because she's in need for that point. Yes. Know? Exactly. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, Kalim, uh, test sign base. Test sign. Test sign base. Yeah. Wooden baskets become susceptible. Do you have that? Yeah, the wooden baskets. Test Zion. You're right. I'm wrong. Okay. No, I'm in the right place, but I don't know what I was counting on. Wooden okay. baskets become susceptible to tumor from when the craftsman secures the rims and trims them. But those made of strips of palm trees, even though they did not trim them from the inside, are tummy, since they are thus kept. A reed basket becomes susceptible to the tumor when he secures its rim and trims it and finishes fastening its hanging for it. A case for holding flasks and a case for holding cups, even though he did not trim them from the inside, are tummy since they are kept. They are thus kept. Small sifters of women, women's baskets are susceptible to tumor from when the craftsman secures the rims and trims them. Large baskets and large bins are susceptible from when he makes two coils around their circumference. And the screen of a sifter, a sieve, or a pan of a balance are susceptible to tumor from when he makes one coil around the circumference. A basket is susceptible from when he attaches two rings around a circumference and the strap basket from which he attaches one ring. But this is all because they become a, a base kibble. All these, is that correct? Uh, yeah, well, it's actually from, from when they become, uh, yeah, that, that's from when they become a base kibble. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, what, what point do leather utensils become susceptible to contracting tumor? A shepherd's pouch from when the craftsman edges it and trims it and he inserts a drawstring. The Buddha says from when he attaches the loops. A leather tanner's up apron from when he edges it and trims it and attaches the sashes. So the that's, that's where basically it's when it's finished and when it's when it's ready to be used. That, that's another criterion over here when it comes to these Caleb. Um it's it's things that are ready to be used. So it's not just so it's not just the base in the previous one. It's not just about the base kibble because we saw about the things that were made out of reeds. Uh, they're not tamay until you've until you've trimmed off the edges. Right. Okay, yeah. and that's that's because it's not going to be used until you've trimmed off the edges. Right. Okay. Rabbi Huda says from when he attaches its rings on the a leather bed spread from when he edges it and trims it. Rabbi Huda says from when he attaches its strings. A pillow and a mattress of leather are susceptible from when he fully stitches them and trims them. Rabbi Yehuda says when he sews them and leaves over in them a space smaller than five hand uh, five, five to five. So what the, what they're saying is one one uh, one is saying that um, it's finished. I think it's finished at this point, and the next the next one. Yes, saying, you know, yeah, it's it's kind of 
um, is almost in Matthias about what's the minhag of when, when this thing is considered complete. Like, would, would somebody pick it up and use it before you've done this stage? Right. And, um, and I guess that's, that's the basis of the machlokes, yeah. Okay, Sanhedrin. When he was for uh, Ahmed, from, when he was for Ahmed from the stoning place, they removed his clothing. They cover a man in front and a, and a woman both in front and back. These are the words of Reb Yehuda. But the Kekomans say a man is stoned unclothed and a woman is not stoned unclothed. The stoning place was elevated twice the height of a man. One of the witnesses shoves him by his hips. If he falls onto his chest, he's turned over onto his hips. If he dies from this, it is sufficient. If not, the second witness takes the stone and throws it upon his chest. If he dies from this, it is sufficient. If not, by stoning is all uh, is by all of Israel, as it is stated, the hand of the witnesses shall be upon him first to put him to death, and the hand of the entire nation afterwards. All those who are stoned are hanged. These are the words of Reb Eliezer. The Kekomans say no one is hanged except for the blasphemer and the idolater, and a man is hanged facing the people, and a woman facing the gibbet. These are the words of the of the of Reb Eliezer. But the sages may say a man is hanged, but a woman is not hanged. Reb Eliezer says uh, said to them, "Did not Shimon ben uh, Shatak hang women in Ashkelon?" They said to him, "He hanged eighty women, and one may not even try even two in one day." How do they hang him? They put uh, they sink a post into the ground with a beam uh, protruding from it. He places his two hands one upon the other and hangs him. But Yoshi says the post is leaned against the wall and he hangs him in the way that butchers do. They release him immediately. If he is left overnight, that constitutes the transgression of the negative commandment, and you shall not leave his body hanging overnight. But you shall bury him on that day, for one who is hanged is like a curse to a shem. That is to say, why was this person hanged? Because he blasphemed, uh, blasphemed Hashem and the name of Hashem is profane. Says Reb Meir, at a time when a person suffers, what expressions does the Shekhinah use, so to speak? I am burdened by my head. I am burdened by my arm. If the other present is pain, so for the blood of the wicked, which is spilled, how much more for the blood of the righteous? Not only this, but anyone who leaves his deceased relative overnight transgressions and negative commandment. If he left him overnight for the sake of his honor in order to bring a casket of shrouds, he does not transgress. They do not bury him in his ancestral plot. Rather, they, um, there were two cemeteries set aside for the court, one for those who were beheaded and strangled, and one for those who were stoned or burned. Okay. Um, yeah. Sukkah. Okay. Hey, a wooden estrog or a dry one is invalid. One from an Asherah or one from a city a, that was... A stolen Estrog, no? What did I say? You said wooden. Why would I say that? I don't know. I have, have you seen a wooden Estrog? I don't see it. Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, models of Estrog, but... Uh, <laughs> unless I heard unless I heard wrong, maybe you said another word that sounded like wooden. What, is, what does the word say there? Stolen. Okay. I, I don't know where that came from. Right? Too much of my coffee. A uh, stolen estrog or a dry one is invalid. One from an Asera or one from a city that was led astray is invalid. One of an Ola is invalid. One of contaminated Truma is invalid. If he said, if he is a pure Truma, he should not use it. But if he used it, it's valid. If it's Demai, Beishamai invalidates it and Beishila validates it. If it is of Mysa, Shani, and Yerushalayim, he should not use it. But if he used it, it is valid. If a scab like boil grew on most of it or its pitum was removed, or it was peeled, or it was split, or it was prompted, or it's missing a slight portion, it's invalid. If a boil covers a minority of it, or its stem was removed, or was punctured, and nothing was missing, it's valid. An Ethiopian esrug is invalid. If one is green as a leek, it may have validated it, but if you would, it invalidates it. The minimum size of an esrug, it may have says like a nut. The Yehuda says like an egg. And the maximum, so that he can hold two esrug in one hand, these are the words of Yehuda. And Rabbi Yossi says, even one that must be held in both hands. Okay. Okay, that would be one monster estrog. <laughs> but yeah, I've actually seen I've actually seen big estrogium like that. I've got a nice photo. I've got a nice photo of my kids. We were, we went to the Shuk Shell Sukkot a few years ago, and they had one of these monster estrogium. It was like it was like a watermelon, like a, but like a giant watermelon. Yeah, <laughs> it was, it was, it was <laughs> one, one group of people. 
that use those large esrogam. I forget. Oh, um, not Sephardim. Um, Samanim? Samanim, yeah. I think they use a very, um, a very large. No, no, it's, not, it's not common to find a big esrog like that anyway. 